I come to you today as the mother of Jesus, the grandmother, I mean the mother of Mary, the grandmother <laughs> of Jesus. Now Mary was a, she was a good little girl. She was obedient and, and happy. She had one strange quirk. She, she talked to Almighty God and as if you were right there by her side. She had a few other friends. One in particular was Joseph, who was a lad who lived down the road away. And he had come to play with Mary since she was just a little tight. And I should have noticed when they began to grow up that Joseph would look at her in a different way and smile. It shouldn't surprise me when Joseph came and said he wanted to talk to her father and I. And then he came in and he started to stammering and stuttering. And my husband said, speak up, son. What's the matter? Can't you talk? Joseph pulled himself to his full height and said, I want to marry your daughter, Mary. What? I said, she's just a child. No more, he said. She's now a young lady and she's old enough to marry. And I've already started preparing a place for us to live. So I, I, I was very confused, but Simeon, her father, scratched his head and looked at her, waited a few minutes and said, Joseph, I cannot think of any young man that I would rather have to marry our daughter Mary. Mary was standing over there in the background trying to listen, hoping that we'd say <laughs> yes. And so they were engaged. Then the word spread quickly around town that Mary was engaged and had not even been a matchmaker involved. But we, we'd been saving since Mary was a wee one, collecting a few shekels for a dowry. We were a poor family, but we could have the wedding down by the arbor under a canopy. And so we began to make little preparations. And then one day Mary came in and she was trembling. She said, I, I, I have to tell you something. She said, I'm going to have a baby. I said, oh no mercy. My child, not our Mary. She said, wait, wait. It's not like you expected. For some reason, I have found favor in the sight of God. And I am going to be the child of Emmanuel, God with us, God's child. Now, Mary had never lied to us before, so I felt I had to believe her, but it was pretty unbelievable. And then Simeon spoke up and said, wait. What has Joseph said? She dropped her head and said, he said he loved me, but he'll put me away privately. So he said, Simeon said, he better do that because you know he could have you dragged into the city square and you'd be stoned to death to be with child. No one would ever believe that you've not been with a man. And I said, but Mary, you'll have to stay in hiding so people won't see you. And she said, no, mother, the whole world will know about this birth. I will not stay in hiding. I'll tell them what happened. But you should know what happened. When she would go into the village, the older women would whisper and point to her. Frown. 
the elders would turn their backs on her and one priest spat on the ground in front of her. Mary tried to explain, but they said, oh yeah, yeah, believe that. But she came back home and as time began to go along, and Joseph had chosen to put her away privately. She was sad at some times, but terribly excited at other times. And then one day when I was out milking the goat, I saw Joseph just leaping and running and shouting. And he said, an angel had appeared to me in a dream. And I'm to marry Mary. She is with child. It is the Son of God. And we're to name his child Jesus. So we quickly prepared a small wedding. And, and as they repeated their vows to one another out under the, the canopy, afterwards Joseph said, we'll not come together as a man and wife until after the baby is born. He said, I've already prepared a room for her. So Mary took her belongings and went to Joseph's house. And the months began to pass. And one day they came to the, to the house and said, Mary said, Joseph has to go to Bethlehem to be enrolled in the census. And I said, and, and you'll miss the birth of Jesus. You won't be able to cut the umbilical cord or maybe not even be here for the time of his circumcision. And Mary said, no, I'm going with him. What? You've got to be out of your mind, child. You can't have that child along the road. It's time for the baby's birth. The child will probably die and so might you. She said, Mother, don't you remember this? This child is the Son of God. It's his responsibility to take care of that baby. <coughs> and probably he'll take care of me. It still bothered me. And I said, but I've delivered babies before. I know how to take care of them. But I didn't mention the fact that Mary was very strong-willed. I knew she was going anyway. So after they left that day, they told me they were leaving the following day. <coughs> I went to the village and went into the merchant and said, I, I was almost in tears, I said, I, I need some swaddling cloth. I gathered together a few coins. And he said, oh, did Mary have the baby and it died? because swaddling cloths are what they usually wrap the dead babies in. And she said, no, 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 just give me the cloth. And she, I gave him the coins and went back home. I hoped that the swaddling cloth would be a reminder to Mary and she wouldn't go. But when they came by the next day, I, I said, this is swaddling cloth. You'll need that if you don't stay here and have the baby at home. She simply smiled and took the swatted cloth and put with her things. And Joseph helped her on the donkey, and they started on their way. Tears were streaming down my face, and I waved as far as I could see them into the distance and started sobbing. And Simeon, in his sweet way, put his arm around my shoulders and began to pat me and said, now is the time for us to trust God, and we must leave it in his hands. And so I, I tried to pull myself together, but in the back of my mind, I thought, I'll, I'll never be able to hold this first grandchild. Won't be able to rock him to sleep, never see him take his first steps. But several nights later, Simeon woke me in the middle of the night whispered, come, I want to show you something. It was as if something very mysterious was happening. 
I, I thought I'd overslept because it was getting light. But he led me to the doorway and pointed to a pulsating star that was brighter than any star I'd ever seen. And he said, it's true. Balaam prophesied centuries ago that a star would announce the birth of a newborn king. And so, I thought, Mary at this very moment may be nursing the child of God. I was amazed. But we weren't the only ones who saw the star. The shepherds in the fields who were, who were tending their flocks saw the stars and the angels singing, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. They got others to take care of their flocks. And they left no sheep to go find the Lamb of God, the Messiah, the newborn King. And just as they followed the star, we too have the bright and morning star that we must follow, that will lead us to the Savior. They would be able to recognize the newborn child because he would be wrapped in swaddling cloths. Time passed, and the wise men of the East had heard that the king was born. And they started out sometime later and began to go to Bethlehem, him, where they had heard the child would be born. And as they went, they took their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And I'm wondering, do you have a gift to take to the Christ child? We can take gold, our lives that have been purified by fire, and come forth as pure gold. We can take frankincense, that sweet smelling incense that can represent the prayers that we have prayed that have gone up as a sweet fragrance before the throne of God. Or we can also take myrrh which was used to embalm dead bodies. And as we come, we can be dead to self and alive to Christ. And the very swaddling claws that Jesus was wrapped in that represented death to a baby, one day, about 33 years later, he would again be wrapped in grave clothes after he had been crucified and laid in a grave to be raised again to wear a robe of righteousness. God has also prepared us a robe. And as we follow that star, the bright and morning star, my prayer is that each of us will find the Messiah Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So make the commitment today to bring your gift to the newborn King. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Merry Christmas. <laughs>